Hello, hello. Are we there? Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, it's me. It's me. Welcome to another exciting live event uh, in collaboration with the National Literacy Trust and Premier League Primary Stars. As ever, it's brilliant to see so many of you joining us from across, across the country. So many of you still coming in just now. We're just getting started. Don't worry if you just clicked on the screen. You've not missed anything yet. But hopefully you are ready for a magical morning of inspiring stories and illustrations. Well, I'm TV presenter Ben Shires, and I'm going to be your host for today. And I'm delighted to say that very shortly, I'm also going to be joined by the one and only Nick Sherratt, illustrator and author extraordinaire. Nick is a very famous illustrator in particular, whose work I'm sure many of you will have seen, enjoyed and grown up with in some of your favourite books from Jacqueline Wilson to Julia Donaldson and many, many more. Uh, before we meet Nick and before we get into our fantastic draw along workshop, there is just a little bit of admin. Uh, so teachers, can you please make sure that your Zoom name is also your school name? It just makes it a lot easier for us uh, when we're giving shout outs and reading out questions and comments later on to know which school it is that we're talking to because often we get a Julie or a Pete and as great as it is to speak to you directly it'd be lovely to know which school you're actually representing and your class as well so if you're not sure how to do that all you need to go do is click on the three little dots uh, that are in the corner there and you choose rename and you should be able to change your name quite easily so hopefully that's been straightforward. Uh, that's enough of the admin now. Uh, let's crack on with the show, shall we? First of all, let's say hello to our fantastic illustrator, Nick Sherratt. Hello, Nick. Hello there. Hi. Lovely to see you all. It's brilliant to have you with us, Nick, and we're going to be hearing a lot from you uh, very shortly, uh, including helping us with our draw along. Uh, and uh, it's all to do with uh, your most recent illustrating project, I suppose, the, the book called Strong and Tough, which was actually written uh, by Rico Hinson King, who, if you don't know, is 11 years old. He's a footballer as well at a Premier League Academy, and he's a fantastic young author. So we're going to be hearing about that book uh, and about how Nick helped to illustrate it and we're going to be hearing from Rico himself as well he's going to be telling us about his book how he wrote it the inspiration behind it uh, and we don't just have Nick we don't just have Rico but we're also very excited to be joined by some special guests uh, from year two at South Palesworth Primary School uh, in Manchester uh, and also Manchester City FC's City in the Community. Uh, they're going to be joining us for some on-screen fun alongside all of you watching in your classrooms around the country. So let's check in uh, with Seacole class uh, in year two and see how we're doing. Are we there, Seacole? Hi there. There they are. <laughs> Looking resplendent, Nick, in those Christmas jumpers. Aren't as they? Well. Aren't they? Yeah. Amazing. We've all got our knitwear on today. Very happy to see that because it's a chilly one outside. Uh, but hopefully we're going to warm your creative cockles as we go along. And uh, Seacole class aren't the only school who are joining us today. Uh, there's all of you lot watching live around the country as well. And uh, the great thing about today's session is that the more that you get involved, the better the event will be. So please, please do interact and engage with us as much as you want. There's loads of ways to do that as well. You can say hi to us in the comments. Uh, tell us who you are, uh, your uh, your school, or if you're an individual, you can give us your name uh, and your town so we can give you a shout out. So we would love to give as many shout outs as we can throughout the session. And one of you who gets a shout out will also be winning a special Premier League box of books. So make sure you get those shout outs in nice and early. Tell, tell us your school name, your class name, and we'll be doing loads of those. And one of you will win a box of books at the end. So stick around to see who that is. Um, we'll also be uh, looking forward to hearing from your comments during the draw along as well. So you can write those in the chat box. Uh, so keep your comments coming in throughout. And we'll also be asking, because this is a draw along and because you're going to be hopefully drawing along with Nick, uh, we'd love to see your drawings as they progress and when they're finished. And the best way to send us that is to take a photo of the drawing and then upload it onto Twitter 
using the hashtag PLPSDraw. So that's hashtag and then the letters P L P S D R A W P L P S draw. Make a note of it, and you can take your photos, upload them onto Twitter, and we'll be checking some of those out as well. And lastly, but not leastly, Nick is going to be answering some of your questions. So if you've ever had a burning question uh, for the or, uh, for the illustrator of Tracy Beaker and loads of other amazing books, he'll be ask, uh, answering those at the end of the session. So get them in before you forget. Um, uh, let's. In fact, we've been talking about shout outs. I'm sure there's some come in already. Let's see who we've got, shall we? Uh, we have got, um, is it Ubra Primary School in Devon? Hello, everyone. Uh, we've got uh, Bure Park Primary as well. We've got Year One Kingsley Primary School. Avonwood Primary School are joining us. Lee and Bransford Primary School. Class 2B at St Mary's in Wavendon. Uh, we've got Mrs Summers Class at Hazeldean School. Uh, Siraj Sana and Bev Braggs at Glade Primary, uh, Class 3C at Shawley Community Primary School uh, and Nettlestone on the Isle of Wight. We'll be coming back to some more shout outs later. Keep those coming in and you could be winning a box of books. Uh, but right now, uh, oh, I keep there's so much going on. I don't want to miss anything out. There is also another way you can win a box of books uh, by taking part in our challenge. I'll give you the details for that at the end of the session. But right now, let's crack on with the real sort of the juicy bit of this morning's workshop, which is uh, is this brilliant book, uh, tough, uh, strong and tough, uh, written by Rico and illustrated by Nick. Uh, Nick, we're going to be coming to you very shortly to tell us uh, about your process, how you became involved in the project. Um, but uh, we've got this amazing book written by a very young and exciting author. Um, Rico is only 11 years old. Um, he's written this book especially for children and he's also an academy player at a Premier League club. So he's a real inspiration. So let's hear from Rico now, shall we, all about his book. Hi, my name is Rico and I'm the author of Strong and Tough. I live in Cheshire with my two dads, two sisters and my dog, Maylie. I like to play lots of football. I wanted to write Strong and Tough because it's my story. I think it's powerful, sometimes sad, sometimes funny and is illustrated by the amazing Nick Sherat. The book is about my life experiences of being in foster care and it is very important for me to be honest and truthful about how I felt. I was very lucky to have found foster parents who wanted to adopt me and my sisters. Life could have turned out very differently for us. I originally wrote Strong and Tough for a competition when I was at homework club. I couldn't believe it when I won the Premier League Young Writer of the Year. There was de there's definitely something in the book for everyone, especially the ones that love football. Oh, that is fantastic. What an inspiration Rico is. And Nick, uh, can you tell us first, how did you get involved in the story and start working with Rico? Because it's not every 11 year old who gets their book published. It's not, is it? No. Well, uh, Rico's prize was to have his book published and uh, the publishers who actually created the book um, thought I would be a good person to illustrate it, which was really fantastic. And it was a lovely opportunity for me. I read the story and I just thought, what a, what a brilliant story, how and an important story too. So I thought I really wanted to illustrate it. And actually, I haven't illustrated many books with um, boy characters in, funnily enough. I've I've done books with, with strong and tough girl characters like Tracy Beaker and a character called Daisy uh, in the books written by Kez Gray. But this was a really lovely opportunity to draw a book starring a boy. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really delighted to have been the illustrator. Well, it's turned out so brilliantly uh, and, it, and it really tells Rico's story or Charlie, the main characters, which, is, you know, they're, they're very similar. 
Um, and I think when we when we think about the, the words strong and tough, uh, we might associate them these days with the, the superheroes that we see uh, on the films and in TV shows, or maybe someone who has magical powers. Uh, but but Charlie, the main character, like Rico, who wrote it, doesn't have any special powers. Uh, what they have is something you know much more within themselves. So what what did you have to think about when you were illustrating Strong and Tough? Well, I think that Rico said in his film that um, Charlie is very, very similar to Rico. They're, they're, they both had the same experiences. So the first thing I did was try and make my character look a bit like Rico. So uh, I drew him to look like Rico. So um, that was the first thing I thought of. Uh, and then I thought, though, this book is really about so many different feelings and and Charlie experiences all kinds of feelings throughout his life. He's sometimes he's he's very sad and um, worried and then uh, he's hopeful and then sometimes he's a bit confused. So I thought the best way to do that was to draw pictures of faces because faces really show how you're feeling, don't they? It's very difficult to not show your feelings on your face. So I had to draw lots of different expressions in this book, like um, some sad expressions. Can you see how I've done the sad face there using the eyebrows and the mouth to make Charlie look sad there? And then uh, later on, he's uh, looking, um, well, how do you think he's feeling there? I mean, he's he's really upset, isn't he, and frustrated. So I drew a big, big picture to try and make it look really powerful that he's really, really upset at that moment in the story. But then there are there are moments when he's he's uh, much, much happier. So like there's a nice big again, I drew as big as possible because I really wanted to emphasize to show how joyful he's feeling at that moment in the story. So there's lots of feelings in the book, but there's also quite a lot of football action as well. So I had to, um, well, I had a lot of fun drawing some football scenes as well, because uh, that's uh, Charlie's big passion. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, and I really enjoyed drawing this one, although the crowd took me quite a long time to draw. But here we have a goal scoring picture towards the end. And, you know, one other thing I did, because this is um, Rico's story, uh, I actually put in a little picture drawn by Rico himself. Can you see that picture there on the wall? <laughs> there, that's actually a piece of Rico's own artwork. So I managed to get in a little personal detail there as well. So it was a really, really interesting and enjoyable book to work on. It's, it's brilliant and it, and it really comes to life with your illustrations, Nick. Um, we're, we're gonna be doing the draw along very shortly, but but before we do that, we're going to have uh, lots of questions uh, from our viewers at the end. I know they'll be thinking of them, writing them in the chat right now. But the last one uh, from me for you, Nick, is do you have any advice or tips for any budding artists out there? Yes. Well, if you're a, a budding artist, you're probably doing lots of drawing already. I think when I was young, art was my favourite thing and I was drawing all the time. And all the illustrators I know, we were the same. It was our, our passion. So we were drawing and drawing and practising if you want to be good at anything like football or music or acting or, or anything, you've got to do a lot of practice, haven't you? And uh, it's quite good to draw as well as drawing from your imagination, which is really good fun. It's really useful to sometimes draw from real life as well. So actually to draw somebody, maybe a friend or somebody in your family, to try and draw them as you see them in front of you is a really good exercise to do. Or maybe the view outside your window or... I don't know, a plant or a bowl of fruit or something like that. You really have to concentrate to make it look as real on the on your piece of paper as it is in front of you. So that's a, a very good sort of practice thing to do, even if you draw in a cartoony style for fun. And also try and finish your drawings, because I remember I used to start a drawing. I used to draw a head and I think, oh, that's not quite right. And then I turn over the page and I start again and I just draw the head and think, Mm, no and then turn over sometimes even if it's not going exactly as you planned if you carry on and you finish your drawing you could end up with a really nice surprise it's really really good thing to do to finish your drawings and also um if you're using um felt tip or paint or something that you can't rub out do you know what you can do if you make a mistake you can 
you don't have to, it's not, a, it's not the end of the world. You can actually get another piece of paper, cut out a little shape just big enough to go over your mistake, stick it down very carefully, let the glue dry, and then you can draw over it with your or paint over it later on and nobody will know that you made a mistake so um, that is a, a really useful tip um, and that's something that professional artists do all the time to to correct their artwork because we all make mistakes I'm always making mistakes and that's something that I did with a lot of the pictures that you can actually see in books you can't see the patch because it's um, I very carefully drew over it so that's another top tip that's amazing thank you so much for those Nick I'm sure they'll have helped plenty of people watching along. Uh, and there are plenty of people watching along in schools around the country because we've had probably more shout outs than I can ever remember. Um, mm. I'm gonna try and get through Great. a few now because you, you've been brilliant at sending these in. So we've got Arthur and Maisie uh, in 1EB and 1BW at Brunswick Park Primary School in Barnet. We've got year two, Mrs. Sells is year two at Fitzjohn's Primary School in Hampstead. Uh, year one at Garth Primary School, uh, Homer Green First School. We've got Poppy Class year one at Bracken Edge Primary School. Emerald two in Ryefield Primary School in Hillingdon. Beacon Primary School uh, in Everton in Liverpool. Uh, Boridar from year one uh, in Dosbeth Orth, uh, Oran, sorry, at St. Michael's. RC Primary School in Newport. Sorry if my Welsh was awful there. Uh, Epiphany School at Hartlepool. Uh, year one, Kingsley Primary School, Hartlepool. Uh, Reuben and his friends in year one, Windsor Primary School in Liverpool. Blackman at Charlton Manor. Buchanan at Seven Kings. Ben Class, Ugborough Primary School. Key Stage 1 at Bure Park Primary School, Butterflies and Dolphins in Educare Small School, Year 2 at Eves Primary School in St Helens, Year 1 at Holbrook Primary School in Suffolk, and Mrs Woods Class at 2WS Tolbrook Primary School, Bournemouth. Wow, so many classes joining us, Nick. It's going to be a brilliant session, and there's one school in particular who are here to help us, uh, very specifically with our brilliant, strong and tough draw-along. So South Failsworth Primary School, are you still there in Manchester Year 2? Can you give us a wave? Hi there. There they are, Nick. Right, well, I think we're all ready to go. So without further ado, let's get on with our draw-along. OK, so I'm just going to move my camera to here. So you can all see my sheet of paper here. And what we're going to draw, draw is we're going to draw a strong and tough character. Uh, but we're all going to create our own individual strong and tough character. So I'm just going to give some, some tips here on how to draw a character. And maybe if we all draw an outline together, and when we've done that, you can really use your imagination and your creativity to create your own special character. OK, so. If you're drawing on a, a sheet of paper, can you draw nice and big? With, um, if you draw somebody that draws quite small, have a go at drawing nice and big. So see if you can actually make your character more or less go from the top of the paper to the bottom, nice and big. OK, so I'm going to start off with the head shape up here. So this is just a, a sort of an outline where we can add details later on. So draw a head shape with two ears like that. And then underneath the head, two lines for a neck. And then give your character some shoulders. Now, when I was at primary school, I used to forget that people have shoulders. They're a really useful thing to draw. So give your character some shoulders. And then I think we'll draw our character in a, in a special pose. We'll draw them with their hands on their hips because that's kind of a way to show that you're strong and tough, isn't it? If you think of strong and tough characters, they often have their hands on their hips. It makes you look a bit bigger than you are normally. It makes you look big and confident. So draw an arm bending round like this on that side. And then draw another arm bending round like this on that side. OK, so you should have a nice big gap in the middle. And then we're going to draw some hands on the end of the arms. Now, I'm just going to draw four, four fingers on each hand, because if you put your hands on your hips, maybe you could do that quickly. You'll find probably that your thumb sort of automatically goes behind your body instead of at the front. Try it and see. Am I right? OK, so we're going to draw four fingers on this hand like that, and four fingers on the other hand, like that, okay? 
And then you should have a gap between them still. Then come back to the arms and draw a straight line going down there and a straight line going down there. OK, so that's the top half of our character. I can see everybody busy in uh, CQL class. And now we're going to draw the legs. Now the legs I'm also going to draw in a kind of a confident pose. So the legs are going to be a bit apart like that, rather than side by side, close together. I'm going to draw them a bit apart so that that's a really good way to stand. If you want to stand firmly on the ground uh, and make sure that you're not going to wobble or fall over, it's really good to stand with your legs slightly apart like that. It really helps root you to the ground. So on the end of those legs, of course, we need some feet. I'm just going to draw a, a foot shape, which later on we can add some detail to. So that's our basic character outline, OK? Uh, this character could be floating in the sky at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little shadow underneath the character. Now, if you're using a pencil, you don't need to press so hard for the shadow. But just add a bit of shadow, a little line of shadow here, and that will automatically put your character on the ground, standing on the ground. So there we've got our basic shape to start off with. OK. Fantastic, Nick. So hopefully everyone is getting on with that outline. And that gives us the starting point to draw our strong and tough character. But there's lots of elements to consider, aren't there, uh, when it comes to uh, what this character is going to actually embody. So what's the first thing that we've got to consider? Well, let's go back to our character. I think we should think about the face, shouldn't we? Now, I'm going to need suggestions from everybody watching about what our character can be wearing on his or her body and maybe what kind of hair and what kind. What, maybe they're wearing a hat or some sort of headgear. So if you could start sending in suggestions for things we can add to the character, that would be wonderful if you can help me. But maybe, first of all, we need a name for our character. So I wonder if... Seacole class could um, could suggest a name for me. Do you think that's possible? Harvey, what do you think? Tricks. Tricks. What do you think, Harry? Tricks. That's a good name. Jake. 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 What should we go for? Tricks or Jake? Hands up for tricks. Hands up for Jake. I think it looks like Jake. Jake. OK, brilliant. Well, I might just write Jake's name up here just to remind me of our character's name. So Jake. So that's that, so my character is going to be a boy. Now, you don't have to draw a boy if you don't want to. You can draw a boy or a girl character. It's up to you. But I'll tell you what, whether your character is a girl or a boy, I think they should have a good, strong and tough expression on their face, don't you? So I'm going to draw. Um, how I would draw a strong and tough character's face. So I'm going to draw a nose round about here. And I'm going to do two eyes at the same level as the tops of the ears, because that's where your eyes tend to be. If you touch the tops of your ears and bring your fingers round, you'll probably touch your eyes. So that's where the eyes are going to go. Um, and then I'm going to give the character expressive eyebrows. Now, eyebrows are really good. Do you remember in, you, in, in the book, I gave um, Charlie different eyebrows depending on how he was feeling. So if I was drawing a strong and tough character, I think I might have one eyebrow that goes down a little bit like that. And the other eyebrow that's more sort of arched like that. Can you see? I think that's, that's quite a good sort of determined expression. But I'm going to add a mouth now to finish it off. Now I'm going to draw a smiley mouth because our character is is quite, um, I think it's good to, you know, quite happy and content, this character. Uh, and I'm going to draw the mouth quite high up in the face. I'm going to draw it quite close to the, the nose. Because if you, everybody give them, everybody smile, everybody do a nice, confident smile. And can you sort of feel your mouth rising up in your face? Can you sort do you know what I mean? Do a smile. And, when you draw your mouth, draw it round about there, okay? So quite close to the nose, not, not touching the nose, but quite close. So I think that looks like quite a good confident expression, don't you? I hope yours are turning out okay.
maybe we could have a very quick look at C cold, see, see how the faces are looking. Can you bring one to the camera? Oh yes, that's looking good, isn't it? Excellent, one more maybe. Let's just see if we can see that on the screen. Yeah, great, good, oh, good start and good outlines there. Right, now, have we got any suggestions yet for maybe what our character, what their hairstyle could be like or what they're wearing on their head? Yeah, Nick, we have had so many coming in. Oh, um, And uh, lots and lots of suggestions. So shall I just give you a few and then you, yeah. you pick your favourite? So, um, okay, I'll have Willows, a uh, 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 sorry, no, I'm, I'm just having a look on the chat here. Uh, we've got Elm Class at Woodford C Primary School said they need a festive Christmas hat. Oh, OK. A lot of people yeah. are getting in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Uh, Wellborn Primary School has either said curly hair or a buzz cut, so they couldn't decide. Right. Uh, it could be half and half, couldn't it? Yeah. It could be half and half. Uh, yeah, they also said spiky hair or Afro hair. So right. they're really throwing out the hair suggestions. Excellent. Uh, OK. Did anybody suggest any any hats from maybe? Uh, well, well, we definitely have seen Christmas hats and I've seen a oh, Christmas hat. Them. Yeah. OK. All right. I tell you what, why don't we do instead of just an ordinary hat? Why don't we do a Christmas helmet? Because I think my character might be very, you know, take good precautions and make sure that they're safe at all times. And they might wear a, a helmet because they might be going off on adventures where they, you know, could possibly um, need a helmet so i'm going to draw see if i can draw a christmas helmet let's see let's draw a helmet shape here on my character not quite sure oh i tell you what how you could make it christmasy you could put a bit of holly on the top like this oh that and, that is going to go down well i'll tell you nick okay and uh, you can also you know add some extra little details or patterns to a helmet and also Later on, I'm going to have fun colouring in my, my character in, and you can have really good fun with your characters. So, OK, so there's a helmet, a, a, a seasonal helmet for the character. I've got an idea of my own, actually. Maybe uh, this character is a really good listener. And, you know, it's very important to be able to listen to people, not just hear what they're saying, but really listen so that you understand what they're saying. That is a really good characteristic for somebody that's strong and tough. So maybe they've got special um, devices that they can clip onto their ear or, or one device. Maybe they don't need to just to help them be a, a very good listener. And also, whilst I'm thinking of it, maybe they are very good at seeing things. They're very good at seeing the solutions to problems that sometimes you think, oh, I, I can't work out how to deal with this problem. But if you can see clearly sometimes that is a really good strong and tough characteristic so maybe they're wearing special special glasses or a, a visor or something like that that helps them see really clearly like that okay so there's a few things to to start off the, on the head now how about uh the body the the body what are, what's our character going to be wearing on its body do we have any more suggestions uh, well yeah please get those in for us so we're thinking uh jumpers or cakes or a, a logo or a, a message or a picture to go on their chest you know um that would be a good thing to to wear isn't it and their footwear of course they'd need special footwear to to make sure that they uh can function as a strong tough character and maybe they've got some accessories. I can think of a few things. I can think of a few things. Um, I think that our character might have, they might have some shoulder pads and knee pads because they, they, you know, they might take a few knocks and they want to make sure that they're not, you know, they can cope with knocks. So, you know, if you fall over or you stumble, then it's quite good to have knee pads or shoulder pads, isn't it? We, uh, there's so many suggestions coming in. Oh, good, good. Can you I mean, tell me some? Class 1JD has said a superhero cape. Um, okay, yeah. The okay. elms like the idea of fluffy boots. Fluffy boots, uh, brilliant. And we, we've had so many suggestions for 
Christmas jumpers or a, a, a Christmas pudding on a jumper. Right. Um, oh, we're very much in the festive. We're in the festive mood here, aren't we? Okay, I'll tell you what. We'll we'll give the character a cape. Okay. So why don't we draw a cape? Now I'm going to draw the top of the cape here on those shoulders like that. Can you see? And then I'm going to draw the back of the cape coming down with two lines like that. And then the bottom of the cake. Now, you know, it's a Christmas cape, so I'm going to make it. I'm going to draw a bit of a furry edge to the cape. You know, like Santa wears a red and white outfit. Hopefully it's fake fur. I don't think it would be real fur. <laughs> so pretend fur on the end of the cape. And when I get to colour in my cape, I'm going to colour it in a lovely bright red Christmas, Christmas red. So it's uh, a Christmas cape there. OK. Um, what else did you say? Um, uh, We've had, we had furry boots as well. Furry boots. Any other kind of boots? Uh, let's have a quick look. If you've got any boots ideas, do put them in the furry chat. Furry boots are nice. Furry boots are good. And I tell you what, I like furry boots very much. I like furry slippers too, because I cannot work if my feet are cold. That's an absolute true thing. Uh, so I've always got slippers on my feet to keep my feet warm. So... Um, we could give we could give the character some furry boots. Yes, why not? Let's, yeah. let's give them some furry boots. Okay, right. So uh, I think I'm going to draw some more furry trim at the top of the boots. And don't forget, uh, footwear has all kinds of details, hasn't it? You've got you've got the sole of a shoe or a boot, and then you've got to decide how it's fastened. Is it going to be a lace up boot, or is it going to have buckles, or a bit of velcro? I think I might give my my furry boots some. Um, they're furry inside my boots. You might have drawn really furry boots on the outside, you know, but my boots are furry on the inside. I'm going to draw some lace ups here. It will be great to see how everybody else's characters are going to look later on. What about um, yeah? What about some gloves? Maybe could draw some gloves as well. Maybe I'm going to give it my character special gloves that help my character reach out and touch things in a in a good way so special superhero gloves with little decorations on them and then a belt maybe a belt with a buckle now somebody must have a good suggestion for a buckle on the belt i'm just going to draw a nice big circle and then we can put the suggestion on the belt buckle when it comes in okay, okay. Uh, in the meantime any... nick as well we've had a, a a lovely suggestion this isn't for a, a, a sort of a something to do with the outfit but galleons primary school said can jake have a speech bubble saying we can do this together Which absolutely do you know what i love speech bubbles i think i put some speech bubbles in in strong and tough here and there but I uh, I'm a big fan of speech bubbles, so we can do this together. Which side shall I draw it on? I'll draw it on this side. OK, I'll write the words first. This is quite a, a tip for you here. If you're doing speech bubbles, if you can write the words first and you can make sure your speech bubble is the right size to go around them. <laughs> if you draw it the other way around, sometimes you don't have room. I've done that very often. OK, we can do this together. We can do this together excellent suggestion because of course our strong and tough character has a, a good voice don't they right okay right any any suggestions for something to go on the on the front of the uh the top yeah well we've got some buckle suggestions oh good uh, good uh, heath brooker said sj on the buckle for super jake um, okay. Yeah. Mr. K has said a lightning bolt or a Christmas tree buckle. Right. Uh, Miss Hughes, year one and two at Spruce Oldfield Primary, has said flame on the buckle. Uh, we've had Sutton Road Primary have asked for a triangle. Um, okay. Another shape. light good shape. Yeah. All good yeah. shapes there. Okay. I think. I think. Do you know what? I like the flame idea. So I think I'm going to draw some flames as a pattern on the the legs like that. So I'm going to draw some flames there. We had a triangle, didn't we? So where can I draw a triangle? I think I might draw, oh, I might add some triangles to the, the cape. I might add some triangles to the cape. 
they're a good shape. And what else did we have? We have the Christmas tree, didn't we? So I might draw, I'm going to draw a Christmas tree right on the front here. I'm going to draw a Christmas tree shape there. This character is going to bring a lot of happiness and joy to people that uh, they meet, I think, don't you? And then I'm going to write Super Jake or the two letters, they'll fit quite nicely in there. Okay, it's going to look, uh, it's, it's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, okay. And Nick, I think we've got some brilliant uh, drawings coming in at uh, Seacole class at South Ooh. Wales Primary School. So shall we go back and, and see how uh, our year two class are getting on? Let's have a look. So hey, look at that. That's amazing. I love it. That's a great. You're quick with the colours. Do you know it takes me ages to colour in, but you've already coloured yours in. That's brilliant. Hold, hold, hold it up. Wow, that's a good one too. That's that's kind of a cousin to mine, isn't it? That one. Yeah. Look at that. That looks great too. Look at that really confident stance that that character's standing in with the legs really far apart. Yeah, brilliant. Another Mary. brilliant one there. Mary, let's have a look at yours, Oh, that's fantastic too. What good drawers you are. What good artists you are. I'm very impressed, aren't you, Ben? Uh, I love them. These are so good. And in the time that people have had as well. Look at that one. Wow. I'm, I, 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 all of those, and they look so strong. And tough. You're drawing in a, a confident way. You're drawing in a kind of strong, tough way as well. You know, you're really going for it, which is wonderful. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> So, Nick, how are we getting on with our character that you've been drawing? Are we are we pretty much there? Well, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, we're getting such brilliant suggestions from people. Is there any any other suggestions of anything I can fit onto the character before? Um, well, I've had seen Heathbrook of us. Can you put lights on the tree? <laughs> oh, OK. Yes, it is a bit. It is a bit bare, the tree, isn't it? So that would be good. Also, you definitely see this character coming, wouldn't you? If it had maybe flashing lights on the tree on its outfit, yeah, okay, cover it in lights. Right, okay, I don't know, I think by the time I've added, maybe there's a bit of space on the cape to do two more things. Are there two more suggestions perhaps that I could draw on the cape, do you think? Let's have a look, is anyone, any class up and down the country got a suggestion for uh, cherry classes come straight in with Christmas puddings? Oh, a Christmas pudding. We've got to have a Christmas pudding. I'll draw a Christmas pudding on this side and then we we'll need one more thing. And then I think our our seasonal strong and tough character will be finished. Yeah. Oh, I'm colouring it in. OK, I'm going to draw a Christmas pudding here. Oh, we've had so many suggestions. Um, this one has actually come in from Seacole, who are, who are watching along with us, and they said a candy cane. And I like that. Oh, candy cane. OK, right. Candy cane there. Okay, well, I think that uh, there we are. I think that is our my my um, strong and tough character. But I tell you what, I can see that there are some just from looking at one class, just lo looking at sequels. There are going to be some amazing strong and tough characters all over the country, aren't there? That are being created right now. Well, amazing. this is the really exciting thing, Nick. Um, of course. In your classrooms, you're going to have been drawing along, creating your own strong and tough characters, and we would love to see them. The best way that you can send them in to us is by taking a photo and uploading it onto Twitter with the hashtag PLPSDraw. Uh, and we'll uh, try and pop some on screen uh, as those get sent in to us uh, because we'd love to see them. Uh, so that hashtag once more for Twitter is PL. P.S. Draw, which is D-R-A-W. We'd love to see those. Uh, but for now, Nick, um, I, I mean, we've been having so much fun. We've overrun. Apologies if anyone's uh, expecting us to finish slightly earlier. But hopefully it's been worth sticking around because we've been absolutely loving your suggestions, loving the drawings from both Nick and, and everyone else as well. We do have a bit of time for questions for you, Nick, from uh, you. our viewers. So let's take some of those, shall we? Um, Shall we, um, shall we come to this one first, which is uh, St. Mary's Year One. How many books have you illustrated, Nick? Have you kept count? 
I need to do a really proper count, but I know that it's over 250 illustrate books that I've illustrated. It's near, it's getting close to 300 now, but I've got to sit down and, and do a proper count one day, but it's definitely over 250. Wow, that is incredible. Um, we've got this one from Miss Watkins class who asked, how do you draw the pictures? I, I guess, how do you get started? Well, um, I, do you know, normally this is this is quite exciting because I'm just going straight for my finished drawing. Like all of you today, you're just going straight for it, which is a is a great thing to do. But normally I do quite a lot of rough drawings before I do my final pictures for the pictures that go in books, just to make sure I get it just right. Because like I said before, I don't get it right first time often. So I have to do a rough drawing and then do another drawing to, uh, that's a little bit better. And then maybe another drawing. So I, I have lots of goes to get it right. And what else do I do? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I try out, I when I colour in, I used to colour, I colour in in different ways, but if I'm using a computer, then I can change the colours. So I, 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 I'm always changing my mind about things. So I do a lot of kind of thinking about my pictures and experimenting with them before I decide on the right one. So it's yeah, I think a lot of people think illustrators just do it straight away like that. It's, it's not quite as straightforward as that, even if the pictures, I hope the pictures look like I do them straight away because I want them to look nice and fresh. But actually, there's there's quite a lot of thought that goes on that that you don't see that goes on behind illustrations. Well, I was I was going to say, uh, Arshin has got a follow up question to that already. He's uh, or, or they, sorry, Arshin, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, Arshin in year two has said, uh, Otters as a primary school has said, how do you get ideas to draw characters? So do you have to think long and hard or sometimes uh, they come to you or? Well, um, sometimes if I'm illustrating for somebody else who's written the words, uh, then um, often I can think how the character looks from their descriptions, the words, how they've described the character in their words. With the Jacqueline Wilson books that I've illustrated, she always gives me lots of clues how to draw the characters. But if I'm drawing a character of my own, then sometimes I think about somebody in real life that I know that's a little bit like the character, it's got the same sort of interests or personality. And sometimes I think, oh, well, maybe my character could maybe have a few similarities in the way that they look to somebody that I know who's like that character in real life. Uh, but I also think about, you know, if I'm drawing a very um, neat and tidy character, perhaps, and I will give them very neat, tidy hair, because I think that's, you know, they would have neat, tidy hair. So maybe very neat plaits uh, or a very, very straight fringe. And if I'm drawing somebody who's a, a quite a wild, lively character, then maybe I would give them wilder hair you know you think about each detail in turn and you try and think what's best to suit your character's personality and this is the last question uh nick it comes from jay in year one at oldwood primary uh, and jay asks what is your favorite illustration my favorite illustration in 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 my book in my own books yep <laughs> can you choose okay i, I maybe I've, I've got a favorite character who i like drawing more than anybody else. I mean, I, I love drawing characters all the time, but there's one character that I've got a soft spot for, and it, it's in this book, Shark in the Park. I don't know if any of the school knows Shark in the Park, but there's a character in here. It's not the little boy in the story, and it's not the shark, actually. It's actually, this is my favourite character. It's Mr Pope, the, <laughs> the boy in the story's dad. And do you know why I, I like this character so much? I think he's quite cool looking, and I love his hairstyle. And if I had some hair on my head, that's how I'd like to have my hair. So uh, it always makes me happy when I draw Mr. Pope. I, and I've drawn him in four books now. So he's he's probably my favourite illustration to draw. <laughs> well, you can't, say, quid, you can't beat a quid, You can't beat a quid. No, I was just going to say about our superhero character. I think it's brilliant that we've got the Christmas theme in. I wasn't expecting that, but the, all the schools have decided on that. But Christmas is really a time when you have to think about other people too, isn't it? And you've got to be, you know, you've got to help other people too and to make it a really nice time of year. So that is a really good quality for a, a strong and tough hero to have. So well done, everybody, for 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 thinking about that.
Absolutely. Uh, Nick, it's been a joy to have that draw along with you and to hear from your brilliant insights into your career and your favourite illustrations as well. Um, we've got a couple more things to, uh, to do before we go, including taking a look at some of the strong and tough drawings that Ooh, we've had good. sent in from around the country. Hopefully we'll be able to see a few of those. It's the first time we've used the hashtag on Twitter uh, to ask for submissions. So fingers crossed this works. Now is the moment of truth, so we'll find out. Oh, brilliant. Oh, wow. Fabulous. Look at all those different hairstyles as well. Great. What good pictures. That is Egremont year one and two. Right. Amazing. Look at all of these. And some more terrific pictures. Oh, wow. And that's we've Eldar girl, class. We've got girl, girl heroes and boy um, strong and tough characters too. And they all looked, you know, I'd really like to meet all of them. They've all got really nice, um, friendly faces, haven't they? Absolutely. Oh, look at all of these. Amazing. Oh, yeah, oh, I want some of those outfits too. Yeah, that was Miss McCafferty's class there. And uh, we've got uh, ASM year one. Here. Oh, excellent. And some lovely writing there as well. Yeah. Oh, great, great pictures. Thank you everyone so much for sending those in. Um, we've absolutely loved seeing your brilliant drawings, hearing your suggestions. Um, it's, it's been a joy. And you can still take part in our challenge after this event by sending us your own strong and tough characters. Uh, you can use the free resources on the Premier League Primary Stars website. Uh, the link will be popping up in the chat right now. Uh, if you give it a go, you're gonna have the chance to win a special prize of a box of amazing books for your school. Uh, and speaking of a box of books, there's uh, another chance to win some right now. So first of all, have we got Seacole class uh, there on hand? Seacole, can we see you again? Brilliant. And Seacole, I think you might have a very special box to demonstrate what one's like. Yes, hello. Um, Look at that. So this is the Premier League Primary Stars box of books. Uh, that's Seacole Class's very own box that they're going to get to enjoy as well. Um, so thank you for that de demonstration, guys. Have you all had a good morning? Yeah. Brilliant. We have too. Well, it's about to get even better uh, for one school cost. We're going to give one of these boxes away here to a school who's registered with us. So can we see the Wheel of Destiny on screen, please? This is where it all goes a bit game show. We've got Jim behind the scenes. So Jim, can you set the wheel in motion? Let's see who wins. It's St. Oh. Paul's Catholic Primary School. Congratulations to you. You are our winners and a box of books from the Premier League is winging its way to you very soon. What a treat. Well, that's about it from us. It just remains for me to say thank you to all of you for joining us today. A particular thanks to South Balesworth Primary School in Manchester, City in the Community, the Premier League, and of course, author and footballer, uh, uh, well, Rico Hansen-King, who is joining us uh, via video there, and the wonderful Nick Sharrett, who has been helping us with our draw along all morning. Thanks as well to the publisher Bloomsbury, who've made sure that all of you can read Strong and Tough on this website, appearing in the chat now for free. So do check that out if you haven't already. And of course, there's always more challenges and fun activities on the National Literacy Trust's Words for Life website and the Premier League Primary Stars site as well. Uh, Nick, it's been uh, an absolute pleasure and a joy. Uh, so thank you again for all of your help this morning. I've really enjoyed it. I just want to say to everybody, happy reading and happy drawing and happy Christmas too. Yes, happy Christmas indeed to one and all. It's definitely had a festive feel today, hasn't it? Well, for the last word, I'm going to hand over to our author pal, Rico, who's got one final message for us all. So uh, in the meantime, give that challenge a go, get illustrating, and we'll see you again very soon. Rico, it's over to you. The message I'd like to share with children 
is that I think we all need to be a bit strong and tough at times in our lives. It's okay to be sad, frightened or scared. I was and I didn't want to cry, even though I did sometimes. And I believe that if I was strong and tough, I could deal with anything that came in along. Just remember, never to give up hope. Happy reading!